Yeah, but the hose! Oh, what? It's too hard to get the hose! Welcome back to the Margaret and CJ arc, where we are continuing by popular demand with a detour into the brief Muscle Man and Starla related stint. That episode is Muscle Woman. If you missed the last episode, do me a solid or the one before that, it's time. Feel free to look in the pinned comment or description and binge up to this point as there may be things not said here because they were said in previous episodes. <laughs> As always, alphaj.show slash merch to get some of the best selling merch I've ever done. Honestly, it is the best feeling ever to know that you guys really enjoy some of the recent stuff there. We start off very clearly with Mordecai and Rigby doing some landscaping, noting that Muscle Man has not even made a dent in his share of the work. Hey Muscle Man, we got work to do, remember? Dude, are you crying? No, crying's for ladies, like you! I don't cry! <laughs> Plot twist, he's crying because that bush was his great grandmother's favorite, and if he ever so much as cut a single leaf, he's not invited to the family anymore. If only, but no. It's exactly the reason you think on this arc he's crying because of a recent event with Starla that we'll later learn. Now, as you will remember on this arc, I've given a lot of praise to Muscle Man in episodes like caffeinated concert tickets where he's just being awesome in the background, or Do Me A Solid where he was a part of Rigby's plan indirectly to put pressure on Mordecai to make it the worst date possible. So far, he's been a solid to amazing background character who provides funny moments and not taking any focus away from the main characters of that episode. Here we see a different side of him, a side that isn't going to come out very often for any other reason. Dude, what's wrong with him? His girlfriend Starla dumped him last night. What? Muscle Man had a girlfriend? I wonder who had more junk in the trunk. You know, that's a good question. Both of them have the build of a Ziploc bag with chopped meat in it if you threw it against the wall, but I'd say it's rather even. I mean, this is one of those scenarios where the love interest looks pretty similar to the character in question. Also, it's nice that we get another high five ghost appearance, and that really makes me wonder, should we fully commit and do all of the love related episodes? Because I know that high five ghost has one, Benson has some, Skips had a whole story, or should we stick to the arc from this point on? Because that'd be a lot faster to complete. I want to know your guys' input there. Speaking of Benson. So it's come to my attention that Muscle Man's been dumped and he can't do his job because I don't know, he's sad or something. So guess what? You two clowns are gonna pick up his work for today. Aw, oh, what? I'm always sad. I'm sad right now. You know, Mordecai, that's kind of been the problem here. However, this is a really interesting way to set up the story. Between the initial incident with landscaping, the confrontation at Muscle Man's crib, and now Benson telling them that they'll be taking on extra work, all of this would drive a wedge into Mordecai and Rigby's relationship with Muscle Man. You see, while a lot of regular show fans enjoy all of the main cast, in universe at this point, they're still learning about each other. Basically what I'm saying is, I wouldn't expect these clowns to understand the pain of leaving the pinnacle of muscle design. They also learned that Muscle Man contributes to a lot of tasks around the park that Mordecai and Rigby didn't even know about. I wonder if this is because of Muscle Man's general work ethic or if he has to pick up the slack of Mordecai and Rigby. Maybe it's a combination of them both. So as Mordecai and Rigby confront Muscle Man again so that they don't have to do his work, they try to set him up with someone else brand new. Check this out. That girl is single. How can you tell? Check out her cart. American cheese singles, a single serving of soup, and who buys one banana? And I don't see a ring on that finger. So what are you waiting for? Hold up, hold up. Wait right there, Muscle Man. Who buys a single banana? You know, as a regular lady killer, as in, I kill the ladies, specifically Evie from Paladins, because why would you give her an ability that blocks all attacks but roots are in place? That is the dumbest way to protect someone because now I can just reload with whatever I'm attacking with and just wait to kill her once the effect is over. That is the most backwards champion in the world. So assuming that this lady isn't making her second trip and got all of her food the first time, she better be like a college student with crippling debt trying to get something in her stomach as she studies for a final exam that's going to look nothing like the test material, or she's actually dumb as a soy packet. Like I'm judging the shopping decisions of this woman. No matter what budget she has, this is an ugly selection of food. Uglier than the fact that the avocados are 69 cents because of course they are. Also the fact that Mordecai noticed that she didn't have a ring within seconds of seeing her is part of the problem. But this is not about Mordecai right now, it's about Muscle Man. So knock it out of the park, dude. This heart beats for another! <laughs> 
Oh man, time for a critical breakdown of this segment. Firstly, I'm even more sus of this woman. I'm never asking the woman who looks like they've been wandering around each aisle waiting for someone to approach her like this. Like she looks way too ready to accept this. With my suspicions being validated when she walks away sad, not disturbed. At least look like I caught you off guard and not like you already have the reservations planned. Also, muscle man, you gotta ask for the name. I would say you already messed this up when you ripped your shirt and screamed Starla into the air, but she looks sad that she couldn't get a date. And even if she did it all perfectly, again, she got one banana. She needs better grocery decisions. Which speaking of, if you're looking for a great service that delivers high quality food for you ready to prepare, so am I. I'm actually really hungry. Let's move on. Ah, uh, everything is all glittery and girls. <laughs> huh? So after taking High Five Ghost's recommendation to try to convince Starla and seeing Rigby hilariously get lost in Starla, putting it as nicely as I can here, we learn some key things here. For one, as I've spoiled earlier in this review, Starla is built just like Muscle Man, a fact that they use to describe Muscle Man when asking if Starla knew him. Secondly, Starla confirms what Muscle Man both verbally and through action has clearly shown, which is that he doesn't really speak about his feelings. It is this fact here that Starla uses as the main factor factor as to why they aren't together. Lastly, they really do build up Sarla throughout this episode to be something special. With all the scenes before, they basically happen because of this woman, so in order for this episode to stand out, Starla has to be as big of a personality as her, her, her head. Let's go with head. Jeez. Oh, Please, editor, just play any clip, just so I don't have to talk about this anymore. I know how Muscle Man can be. He's annoying, he smells, and he pretty much has no common decency for others, but he's still human, and he has feelings. We're just fragile beings looking for someone to share something with, to laugh with, to love. Oh, found a new thing to talk about. One thing that cartoons have over their live action counterparts is the ability to exaggerate things to an over the top level and have it be seen as conventionally okay. Sometimes even praise or show defining. While regular show has a different signature level of exaggeration, we just need to take a minute to just acknowledge what's happening here. Mords, which is my new name for Mordecai whenever he does anything like this, went into this store, met this lady for the first time, and is already dropping 13 reasons why Muscle Man is a good guy and Starla should date him. Mind you, this is after Do Me A Solid, an episode which had him be rather casual with his double date, but here we're getting him getting incredibly sappy and emotional within this episode. Also, then he say that Muscle Man is human like him, but you know what? Even though all of this is super sappy and just exactly how I envision Mordecai to be, not a bad thing at all. You see, Starla did not like that Muscle Man didn't speak about his emotions. So guess what happens with the first guy that we see around her speak about his emotions? Wait, you, you have such a way with words. Muscle Man never talked to me that way. He didn't like talking about his feelings, but you. You're different. Ugh, oh god, it's it's the close-up of the hand that gets me. Well, this was not the ideal route to take when it came to showing that Muscle Man can be a good guy, but Rigby has a spectacularly bad idea. If Mordecai takes Starla on a date or three, then breaks up with her, she'll go crying back to Muscle Man? If I ever get done with this series, someone remind me. Rigby's bad ideas would be a great follow-up. This man has an impressive amount of bad ideas that should be studied. Of course, Mordecai doesn't want to do this, I wonder why, but the one thing I wish this episode had more of was High Five Ghosts. I really wish they got more of his input in within this episode, as he is the closest one to Muscle Man at the moment, and they go way back, so it only makes sense to have him be more of a guide in this scenario. Like maybe he could have warned against the idea, but Rigby would insist on doing it, and Mordecai could do it only because he doesn't want to do the chores. Like he could have had Benson call them up and say, I don't know, there's more chores chores piling up and that seals the deal. Anything to get more of High Five Ghost basically. Oh yeah, and I guess I should say, Rigby not also taking the possibility that if Mordecai dumps Starla she could very well not want to be with either of them is another factor as to why I need to examine all of Rigby's bad ideas. So after a montage of dates that are all really one-sided, we get to the big moment. Dude, did you dump her yet? No. Come on man, get it over with. 
I don't want to do muscle man's work anymore. I'm exhausted. I know, I know. I'll dump her. The fact that he had to be talked into dumping Starla is hilarious. Good thing he's doing all of this with Eileen and Margaret not here, or else we'd be having a very different episode. Within the montage, as I mentioned, it's very one-sided. But in addition to that, above all else, at the top of the list, Mordecai for sure did not want to kiss Starla. So of course, having that be what causes the breakup is poetic in a sense, and it leads into a rather harsh but quick breakup. The funny thing about it is, when Mordecai's emotions are not attached to a particular situation, he seems to be ruthless. I'd imagine if he were in the same situation with someone that he does like, but the relationship was toxic, I don't think it would have went exactly this way. Now to you guys calling me Captain Obvious, I'll speak to myself. Having to tell someone, whether it's a friend, significant other, or even someone I'm working with, hey I can't do this anymore. That's really hard, whether it's real or fake. So even in this situation, I don't think I could have been that ruthless, even with the unwarranted kiss. I mean, I guess I did completely tear down that one woman in a grocery store for having a single banana, but look, I'm a panda with complicated feelings. Better than any superhero villain that's out, for sure. I am way more terrified of a woman built like that breaking a wall and throwing a table and changing up her voice than anything else. She looks like she's going to break Mordecai just by getting her hands on her. To prevent this, they get in the golf cart and we get a really good chase. I gotta say, of the big action scenes that we've gotten, this is up there. I'm not sure how much time it took to animate Mordecai swerving the golf cart in a way that tosses Starla into the trash, but it was worth every crash from their animation program which makes them wonder why they pay a yearly subscription for it, even if it can't go a week without crashing. Adobe. <clears throat> Not saying that regular show was animated on Flash by the way, just airing out some minor frustrations. We get to see the true destructive force of Starla. She's just awesome. We got to see her soft side, her passionate side, even some of the comedy that she can bring. But her intimidating side, which is like Muscle Man, is similar in nature. The only true difference between the two, besides the lipstick, is the fact that Starla, the Muscle Woman, can speak about her feelings and be open with that. They somehow managed to get back to the park off the golf cart, and the night that they had to get rid of was actually a night. We're live at the park where reports of a crazed woman on a rampage. <laughs> You have to talk to her! <laughs> I'm sorry, did she just drop kick or leg drop her way onto Mitch's house? Wrestling isn't even doing anything like this anymore. At least the show's on TV, of course. The appearance of Starla does bring Muscle Man out of his house as he sees his home has been destroyed. We see all the carnage and wreckage that comes from a scorned and single Starla, and it just now occurs to me. I know regular show licenses music from songs from a particular genre and age, but if this idea makes his ex gonna give it to you in the background, this would have topped my best of list for years to come. I don't even care what year it came out. It would have still been number one to this day. As she stares down her victims, the bluebird and raccoon who realizes that running is futile as Starla seems to be operating off of a terrifying amount of energy and anger, the only thing that can save them is Muscle Man, who is still acting kind of soft. Now, curious viewer, you may wonder why I don't call Muscle Man a simp in the way that I've called Mordecai a simp. Well, it's simple logic here. Crying over a breakup is logical and natural. It most likely was a serious and intense relationship given what little we've seen of Starla already. Plus, he got the girl. You can't be a simp in this scenario if you actually got the girl. He'd be a simp in this scenario if the reason he was crying was because Starla on her Twitch stream after donating thousands of dollars to her and getting her to give you five seconds of validation, had her boyfriend show up in the middle of the stream and now you're upset because you can't date her, rather than donating because you wanted to support the stream. That that simp behavior. This is just a king that needs to get it together. And together he did. Darla, I can understand that you're upset. When I look at you, I think of someone I know. That someone is me. 
Mitch Stornstein. He finally speaks about his feelings, which is a very wholesome moment. We don't get a lot of scenes like that when it comes to Mitch. He's generally used for comedic effect, but when it's necessary, he can have great moments that don't deal with comedy primarily. It's also a good way to solve this without Mitch being mad at Mordecai, as that'd probably soil his character for acting toxic to the person who was just trying to help. I'm actually really surprised that Rigby's plan didn't end up worse, and while you may look back at episodes like It's Time and go, Rigby's been through worse, do note that in this episode he calls today the, the most disturbing day of my life. Which would tell you something about the power of Sarla. Of course they get back together, it's necessary for mankind, and we all learn a lesson here. If they break up, move jobs. It is not worth it to get in the middle of them. Muscle Woman is awesome, it's a great detour. And if you guys want to see more detours, we do have one in Season 3 revolving around Benson, Weekend at Benson's. It's not for a while, so do look for the community posts about this and make sure to vote. The next two appear to be Camping Can Be Cool and Slam Dunk, two back-to-back -back episodes that revolve around Mordecai and Margaret. Until then, check out alphaj.show slash merch to get some of the fastest selling items so far in my catalog. And until next time, take care. Alpha out.